Hey, everybody. Belinda, hello, welcome. Hi, Ashley, how are you? Great, how are you this evening? Um, hanging in there, hanging in there. Thanks for having me. Welcome um, to our guest tonight. I am Ashley Eason. I'm a Democratic candidate for the Indiana State Senate. Uh, I'm running in District 36. I am a proud first time candidate and I'm really looking forward to bringing more women's voices to the table uh, and to the voting seat uh, in our state Senate, uh, as I know my guest is tonight as well. Um, tonight I'm so happy to kick off our Women in Politics event series to shine a light on other women in politics in Indiana. I know that these women will be offering insights and advice and encouragement to women like me seeking leadership positions in politics and public service. While women in leadership positions in government are continuing to increase, really thrilled about that, uh, in 2020, only 27% of elected offices are held by women. We want to change that beginning now, beginning in this next election, and we want to work together to do that. Um, I also want to share that in our own Indiana State Legislature, of the 150 seats between the House and Senate, only 36 of them are held by women. That's just 24%, so that's even less than the national average. Tonight, I am so delighted to have Belinda Drake join us. Uh, I'm only gonna share a few things about her because I want her to tell her own story, uh, but just a few highlights to introduce my special guest this evening. Uh, Belinda Drake is a progressive Democrat candidate for the Indiana State Senate in District 32. It actually neighbors the 36th district. Uh, Belinda was born and raised in Gary, Indiana, and she's been living on the Far East side of Indianapolis for the last three years. Uh, she's an alum of IUPUI, happens to be in the 36th district. Uh, she serves on many boards and organizations, and she's worked on other campaigns, supporting other candidates. Um, a couple to highlight include the Indiana Stonewall Democrats, and she's been the treasurer for the Lawrence Township Democrats. Currently, she's serving as the seventh district chair for the Indiana Young Democrats. And she's the national delegate to the 2020 Democratic National Convention. Uh, as if that's not enough, you have so much more to tell, Belinda, and that's why you're on our, our uh, series event this evening. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, thank you for having me, Ashley. Um, I am extremely appreciative of this opportunity and for being the, the first um, person um, as, as, part of the, as part of this Women in Politics series. Um, like you said, I am uh, running for state senate in District 32, uh, which is close to your district in, in District 36. And um, I am a Gary, Indiana native, um, born and raised, but I've been in Indianapolis since 2004. Um, I came to Indianapolis um, on a basketball scholarship um, back in 2004. And then I went on to college at IEPUI, uh, where I graduated with my degree in political science and minor in legal studies. And right out of college, um, I started working with public allies where I learned more about um, community-based training and how to be an asset to my community and how to actively listen. But my senior year in college, I got a chance to um, learn a little bit um, about what we call uh, politics. And I interned with Congressman Andre Carson. And ever since then, I feel like um, I've, I've been um, in a space where I've always wanted to, to help and to serve. And, and I think that just goes back to my upbringing, um, which I was surrounded by a lot of strong women leaders in my family. Um, I am the first of 25 grandchildren on my mother's side to graduate from college. And we'll just start there um, because this is about uh, women empowering women. And I cannot wait until we're able to work alongside each other um, in our state house after this November. So thanks again for having me first on the show. Absolutely. Thank you for joining me. I, my only regret is we can't do it in person, but <laughs> uh, hopefully someday soon we can redo this uh, in person. I guess let's start with um, Gary, Indiana. Tell me about what it was like to grow up there and what made you pick the major you did for college? What made you want to try out some of those different professions? Well, um, growing up um, in Gary, Indiana, um, I was introduced to a lot of things at a young age, um, things such as uh, 
poverty, um, gun violence. Um, I lost my grandmother mm -hmm. and my aunt um, to a, a broken healthcare system. They both passed away from breast cancer. And as a kid growing up, seeing all these different things, seeing um, how poverty and systemic racism was taking a toll on my family, I felt moved to, to learn how to help people, to figure out how can I make sure that people in black and brown communities have access to adequate health care, to make sure that we have a real um, reform within our criminal justice system. And then that's what I, I think that's what actually led me into wanting to study political science, just trying to figure out how can I help on a, on a larger scale um, because Lord forbid that someone else in my family uh, were, were to be diagnosed with breast cancer or even myself. Um, I want to make sure that I've done everything that I can to make sure that the resources uh, reach people um, in my specific communities. And I think that that's what triggered me into wanting to study political science and, and just learn about policies and, and helping people um, being that true um, public servant um, at a young age. And then now here I am um, trying to run for state senate and I am doing it. We are um, actually running a groundbreaking campaign uh, here in Senate District 32. And at the end of the day, I, I know that my constituents, my community will have that bold leader that we so truly deserve. And I'll be that voice for people like my grandmother and my aunt who ran out of time as they were fighting for their lives um, due, due to uh, breast cancer. So powerful to hear that from candidates like you who have seen uh, when government, when our public servants have failed us, have failed to see the need um, among all communities. So um, that's that has made you who you are today. It makes you stronger and more uh, empathetic to the needs of your constituents. Can you tell me more about some of the roles that you have filled in politics? What was maybe what was your favorite or what was the most challenging that you'd be um, willing to share about? I think that all of it has been interesting, uh, meaning the last 10 years of, of my life um, in, in this work of public service, uh, because I started actually 10 years ago um, as an intern with Congressman Carson back in 2009. Mm -hmm. um, then I went to learn more about community work. Um, then now I, I currently serve um, on our a national organization, Indiana National Organization for Women as our racial justice and diversity coordinator. Um, I, I've learned what it means to be a young Democrat in Indiana. But I think one of the challenges has been continuing to be my true authentic self at times in all the spaces uh, without that being a distraction from the work that I'm capable of doing as a, as a black female in the state of Indiana. Um, but I, I know that times are changing. I, I know that um, constituents and communities and, and voters are just looking for someone to roll their sleeves up um, and be on that front line and, and listen and, and do the job. And I think that over the last 10 years, I, I've done just that. I um, have been in some type of social work capacity where I worked at Family and Social Services, Department of Child Services, help launch the Affordable Care Act here in the state of Indiana to make sure that Hoosiers have access to adequate health care and to take all of that and just and just pour it into policy and legislation. Um, I think that the time is now and I think that um, Senate District 32 understands that and they know that I'm going to be on that front line fighting like I have been for the last 10 years. Well, I think that's a good segue into um, when you're elected, what are you most excited about uh, serving in the state ha state Senate? Is there a specific committee you're excited about? Are you excited about the relationships with the colleagues you can develop? What what is what are you what kind of keeps you going every morning that you're looking forward to? Um, one thing that I'm extremely excited about after being elected is joining the Indiana Black Legislative Caucus, uh, where I get to work alongside um, other great leaders like. Uh, Senator Jean Bro, who is my mentor, who's been fighting this fight for a long time. And I also look forward to helping make sure that we can have an inclusive hate crimes 
um, bill here in the state of Indiana so that all marginalized communities are protected. And, and I just look forward to, again, working alongside people like you um, once we get elected and just being that voice. But I think it starts with going in and, and being willing to listen, um, being coachable, uh, which I have, have been because I've played sports since I was nine years old. So I know what it takes to be a team player, but I was a point guard. So I know what it means to be a leader as well. So that part. <laughs> I like that. Oh, wow. Well, okay, another question. Tell us about a woman who has significantly impacted your life. You already talked about your grandmother and your aunt, but are there any other women that have been role models or mentors or colleagues that have helped propel you to this moment today? Um, I think that I've been blessed to be surrounded by a lot of strong women in my life. Um, one being my mom. Um, she raised three kids as a single mom um, in Gary, Indiana, during a time where it was extremely hard um, to be a, a black mother, um, but with her perseverance and determination to make sure that her children had a bright future, I, I think that I would be doing a disservice if I didn't thank her just for, for choosing me, for choosing my brother and my sister, for giving us life and providing us with the tools to break those uh, generational barriers, to make sure that uh, we have a bright future. So my mom has been a great influence and a positive role model in my life. And then I would also like to say that um, some of my young Dems, some of the female young Democrats that I worked alongside, to see um, people like um, Ariel, who's our president for our Indiana Young Dems, and then we have uh, the Schrock uh, sisters, who continue to be fearless leaders um, in Indiana politics, and I, I don't think I've ever said that, so this is the first time I've said publicly, but I look up to some of my peers um, because they are the ones who, who keep candidates like myself motivated when, when we feel like we're exhausted or retired or we're not being heard. They continue to um, help, help me see that change is happening, even if it's one day at a time. So there are a lot of uh, women that I actually do look up to, and that's just to name a few. That's a great question, though. Well, we're pretty lucky here in Indy and in our state. Um, there's a lot of women to look up to uh, in politics in particular. And I, I love that you mentioned the Shock Sisters. They've been, they've become great friends of mine. Um, let's see. Great, great, great friends, great allies, um, just great sisters in, in, this, in this grand scheme of things of change. It's, uh, it takes, it takes a whole village to make positive change every day. So um let's see what what's been the significant challenge for you that you've had to overcome is there something that you're you're incredibly proud of that it wasn't so easy but you're so glad that you pushed through it um i would say that as a candidate this year it's been extremely challenging for all of us <laughs> you know, like this yep. like, let's be real about it um it's, it's been challenging but at the end of the day, what's the alternative? Doing nothing. Um, and, I, and I think that that's part of what motivates candidates like, like you and I is to say that we need leaders who will um, be on the front lines, who will continue to push through adversity, who will continue to just do what's needed and be proactive in our solutions. I just think that some of the um, challenges we've all faced uh, this year uh, due to COVID has due to is due to a lack of a lack of leadership, a, a lack of being proactive in our thought process and solutions. So I, I would just say nothing any different than um, maybe like people like you or other other women that are running for office has has had to um, push through. But one thing that I would say that maybe personally that I've um, had to overcome is learning to again, be my uh, true authentic self in all spaces. Um, and that's being um, a black woman uh, running for state Senate um, in the state of Indiana. Um, but I know that there are more people like me out there. I know that there are more um, African American uh, women in the field that's just looking for someone to relate to. So if I do nothing else this election, but inspire another black woman to run for office, then I've done my job, Ashley. Yes, absolutely. Um, 
No, I, I, uh, we talk about on the, I talk about that internally in our team a lot too. Um, at least I do. Maybe my team doesn't. But what I say is, even if the worst case scenario happens, I have learned so much already in this time about myself, about our community, about how to make change, about how to influence, that um, I don't, neither of us are on a bad path, no matter what happens on November 3rd. But I do, but I do wanna say this, um, we both saw some things today, um, some numbers today, let's not be shy about it, let's be real about it. And Senate District 32 and Senate District 36 is looking for leaders like us. My constituents are ready to elect me into office to serve, to listen, and to lead. And we're doing just that. So, and then I'm extremely grateful for my team. And, and I think that we don't, we don't do enough, in my opinion, because I'm, I'm a team-oriented individual, um, to acknowledge how much it takes to run a campaign and then how much it takes to, to win. And, and, I, and I know that without my team, like I, I just wouldn't be in this space um, that I'm in right now. And, and I'm grateful and I'm appreciative. So what I'm saying is candidates, appreciate your team. Understand in all things that we are stronger together in all spaces. Linda, I couldn't agree with you more. Um, I did not play sports. They were an interest. I tried, I tried out in seventh grade. They just were like, you know, it's not gonna work out for you. But what I did in a team sport is choir. Choir from middle school all the way into college, um, almost did it professionally. And that, talk about a team, you have one part. And if you don't do your part right, it doesn't mesh with the other parts, you don't have anything at the end of it. So I love the way you think about that because seriously, if I didn't have a team, I couldn't do any of this. Um, and that's true of every candidate and I think I appreciate you saying that. I know my team appreciates you saying that too. <laughs> <laughs> um, I hope that everybody across the board appreciates it. And, and I think that us coming together, uh, first in your series of women in politics can send that message of solidarity that we are ready to work together now. We are ready to be the fearless women leaders in the state of Indiana right now. And, and it takes us coming together. So I am extremely appreciative of being your first guest as well. Absolutely. Well, you know, part of the reason I wanted you to be my first guest is one, you're also doing the same crazy thing I'm doing the same time. And two, I wanted to have your voice at the table. If anything, I see running for state Senate and hopefully serving in our state Senate is a chance for you and I to open the door to the state Senate, to lawmaking, to our neighbors. And so I wanted to start with you, a friend and colleague, to give you a chance to tell your story. So I have a couple more questions, if that's okay. Oh, of course. Thank you, time. <laughs> Although we could just talk, we should probably just open some wine and chat for the rest of the evening. But um, maybe let's talk about some of the policies that you're focused on. Is there something that you're really excited about that's already changed? Is there a specific, you've already mentioned a couple, um, hate crimes legislation in particular, but is there something that you're really focused on every day as you talk to voters? Um, one thing that I continue to hear is that we need to, we need to get back to focusing on legalization and decriminalization of marijuana. Um, I look forward to working alongside um, other legislators who are um, committed to making this happen for all Hoosiers, not just those in Senate District 32. And with that, uh, we can, again, open up funding to uh, pre-K, so that all kids can have access to that. We can open up funding to pay our educators more with, with one simple thing, and that's legalizing and decriminalizing marijuana in the state of Indiana. So that's something that I'm really looking forward to. And then something else that, another policy that I would love to see um, come to life is, um, I think that it's time, and, and I'm gonna get serious with you really quick, Ashley. I think that it's time that we define consent in the state of Indiana. Um, as, as, as women, um, I just think that I look forward to working alongside you to make sure that we make this happen in the state of Indiana. It's time, it's long overdue, 
and it's unfortunate that it has not happened yet. So um, I hope that that wasn't too um, too much, but those are, are two things that I look forward to working alongside you with. I appreciate you sharing that. I, um, I just happened to be on a Q&A time, uh, the host of our prosecutor mirrors this afternoon. Um, <laughs> and so I, I'm curious your thoughts um, about, you know, at least approaching Marion County uh, to decriminalize or to not prosecute um, possession of marijuana. Um, how did you feel about that when that happened just a few short months oh, ago? I, I think that when, when it happened, um, I felt a sense of relief in, in my communities. But I think we have to go a little bit further uh, to make sure that we fully legalize and decriminalize marijuana in the state of Indiana. Um, again, so that we can have funding to make sure that our kids get access to pre-K. We have a lot of infrastructure problems here that we can uh, take care of with some additional funding. And then I think that once we really get to um, how much we can do with legalization of marijuana, I think that we can then tackle again the opiate crisis here. Um, and that's a huge issue in Senate District 32 as well, and probably your district. It is. So, yeah. I just think we just need to like, let, let's keep going. Let's keep this momentum. And, and it makes me happy uh, that in Marion County, um, things are changing, um, but we still have a long way to go. But I know that I'm, I'm preaching to the choir. I know you know that, and that's why we're in this fight together. Thank you. And yes, um, opioid addiction is very much an issue here in the 36th district as well. Um, I'm particularly concerned about the impact of COVID-19 on that issue because there are some of the resources that addicts have not had access to to help them um, have closed are not available are less convenient um, and it's definitely put a large part of our population at greater risk over the last few months among a hundred other ways that COVID has done that to our community so thank you for bringing that up um, okay something fun what are books podcasts if you have time for that, I'm not sure who does, but uh, maybe it was before you ran that have kept you inspired or helped you, helped you develop your career um, or something that you go back to a lot. Um, something that I continue to do is listen to music. Um, I think that anybody that, that knows me um, know that I appreciate music on another level. It's extremely therapeutic. So I will always find a song that um, I can relate to in the moment or something that just keeps me motivated um, to help me get back to my why and why I'm even um, doing this. Um, one song that I, I did share today was the Age of Day, Rise Up, um, because we are rising up together um, as women in politics. We're doing it right now. Um, regardless of what anybody has to say to you, we're doing this right now together. And another uh, thing that I enjoy doing um, is I do read, but I, I feel like right now I'm so focused on listening to my community and making sure that I'm actively listening and, and being the representation that the community needs that has taken up majority of my time. Um, but I, I know that it will be worth it in the end to allow for Senate District 32 to have a leader such as myself. You know, other than campaign materials uh, and Facebook and social media posts, I haven't had the chance to read a whole lot. So I'm, I'm right there with you. Um, also with the music thing, that's, uh, that's something, it's weird. I miss it because I'm not driving to work as often. And when I would drive to work, I'd either be listening to NPR news in the morning or I'd be listening to music. And so now I drive so much less than I did a few months ago. Um, I'm missing out on some of the music, but I'm going to have to to pull that, pull those headphones back out and uh, get back into it. Thanks for the, uh, that's a good idea. Well, here, um, I see that you have a guitar behind you. Uh, I was going to ask if you play. Badly, yes. <laughs> I do play. Um, my husband plays quite well. Um, I play okay and sing a little bit, but that was actually our wedding guest book. We had our guest sign uh, his a uh, little guitar, and then we surprised everyone and played at our wedding. They didn't know we were going to perform. It was amazing. 
Well, I look forward to um, hearing you play the guitar once we get in the state house. Let's get elected first. I love it. <laughs> we could do karaoke nights too. Right. Um, <laughs> so we just have a few more minutes left. Um, I want to just check with my team here. Do we have any questions coming in? I can't see them on my screen. Maybe just how people can support you and support Belinda during okay. this time. Great support. question. How can they support us, Belinda? Um, well, I, I'll start, and then Belinda, I'd like you to share too. Um, it's pretty wild to run for office. It is comp it's like running a business almost, um, having a startup company, and we need all the support we can get, and that's everything from a nice text to tell us that we're doing well and that they saw our video tonight and enjoyed it to showing up and canvassing with us and doing literature drops uh, on the weekends to our target precincts to volunteering their time to do phone banking and of course it takes money to run a campaign and i know you and i both need contributions from people that are able to do that and so I think we'll post in the comments tonight, I know your team will too, um, ways to sign up to volunteer through either of our campaigns and also ways to contribute financially um, to help both of us get to the state Senate. Belinda, what else do you wanna to add to that? Um, the only thing I will add is continue to be engaged, uh, whether it's our campaigns or someone close to you. Um, continue to make sure that not only you're registered to vote at your current place of residence, but make sure your neighbors are registered to vote. Um, and then, like Ashley said, um, we are, again, on Facebook. Uh, we're on Twitter. It's I am Belinda Drake on Twitter. Then it's Believe in Belinda on Facebook. And then Believe in Belinda on Instagram. And the website is BelindaDrake.com. And most, most, most importantly, what we need you guys to do is Vote for Belinda Drake and Ashley Eason come November 3rd for State Senate District 32 and 36. Yeah, that is right. Um, you know, I think a lot of people I talk to are so focused on the presidential race. They have no idea that there's candidates on down the ballot that actually do things every day that can impact their lives. And that's the thing about State Senate and State House is these leaders get to make choices about the laws that govern our state. And um, I'm also very interested in what happens in the presidential race, but I'm a lot more interested in what happens here because this is where it really sets the tone for what happens at the national level. What happens in Congress is how are we leading our own state here? So I'm so grateful to you, Belinda. Thanks for your friendship and thanks for your support as a colleague, as a fellow candidate. Um, and thank you for sharing your story uh, and your authentic self and um, the, the things you can celebrate and the things that are challenges. I just, I really appreciate you being um, open with me and open with our audience today. And let's go, let's go win these seats. Thank you for having me and it's time. And as our, as we say it, within our young dim circle, it's our time and it's our state. And we are women leading through adversity right now. But what I know that come November 3rd, District 32 and 36 will have the true leaders that we deserve. So thank you. Cheers to that. Right. Belinda, thanks. I'm gonna wrap this up, but please everyone else, Feel free to continue commenting and we'll be in touch on the comments and we'll see all of you uh, in a future Thursday night for another Women in Politics. Mm -hmm. Thanks so much, everybody. Have a lovely evening.